Hello, this is Warlord, and I apologize for the long time it's been since I've posted a new iClone tutorial. It's just that I've been very busy, and Realusion's pumping out a lot of tutorials right now anyway. But I still get a lot of email on how to put in older uh, Renderosity, Poser, Daz characters, things that aren't Genesis. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take another look at doing that. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is go to my smart content on Daz Studio, and I'm just going to go to People, and I'm going to grab Bizman. This is one of the older characters. Now, there's nothing to this. I'm not going to do anything at all in it in Daz Studio. I don't use Daz Studio that much except for what you see right now. So what I'm going to do is File. I'm going to Export. Of course, we're going to want the FBX, and I'll call it Bizman. Now, we don't want to put Selected because we're going to take it all. We want Figures, Props. You may want to go ahead and take a screenshot of this or stop it where you can see it and take these uh, settings down. Just be sure that your output options are set to FBX 2011. I don't really know if it has to be binary or ASCII. I've never really changed that. Mine's always been set on binary. So again, make sure it's set to FBX 2011. Also, under Edit Morph Export Rules, you have to have a rule in there, a final rule that bakes anything. So it's final, match anything, bake. So be sure you create that rule and that it's in your FBX export rules. Now we're ready to just go ahead and export it. Okay, now that we've got it exported, let's go to 3D Exchange 6. I'm going to open it up. There's Bizman. Now this doesn't have any animation in it. Let's go ahead and leave that so I can show you how to delete it if you've never used this. So now it's exporting it in, and one thing to remember before you go any further is get in the habit of smoothing the meshes, even if it looks like they don't need it. And this mesh does look like it's in good shape. Now to smooth the mesh, you got to actually select the mesh. Because you can get over here and you'll see that auto smooth is grayed out. Well, meshes, they have this little symbol right here, this little circular symbol with a, it looks like a graph in it. They have that little symbol next to them. This could have been in four or five or a dozen meshes. It's actually just in one. So we'll select it. You'll notice how Auto Smooth is now available. I've got it set on 90. I went ahead and hit Auto Smooth. As fast as that was, it really didn't smooth anything. But iClone can handle smoothing groups a lot differently, particularly depending on the software that the mesh is made in. So I definitely recommend you using Auto Smooth first. Just get into the habit of it. Now, as far as the animation we left, that was the frames that were built in. There's nothing actually in there. So you could delete it down here which is the, the perform menu for this character if it goes into iClone but I would delete it up here under the master under the motion library that way it's not bothering you at all for anything now let's go ahead and let's move down and let's convert to non-standard now this isn't going to be difficult there will be a mistake in the conversion but we're going to go ahead and use the dash 4 Genesis built-in conversion now the problem is going to be the chest is not attached right And that's very simple to solve. For me, it's always inside here. It's always right here in this uh, spinal column. Just right click and clear it is really all you have to do. And then you can see that it's working now. Now, if you really want to go ahead and attach it, then what you want to do is use the bottom bone. Then link it up. Then make it active. Preview it. Now let's take a look at something else. You'll notice that the shoulders are slumped. This is one of my complaints with how this converts characters. The shoulders will come in this slumped into iClone. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now it's pushing it over into iClone. Okay, here's our character. And you'll notice the shoulders are slumped. Now I'm just going to go ahead and move the character over out of the way. Deselect it. Let's go back in here to 3D Exchange. Let's go back to Convert. We don't really, I'm just cleaning that up. You don't really have to do that. What we're really wanting to do is just deactivate it and change this pose. It's easier to fix it here. Then you don't have to fix it. You can go ahead and correct it in iClone, but you have to correct it every time you load the character. So let's go ahead and let's move the shoulder way up here. You may have to do this trial and error. You get it exactly like you want. And then let's just straighten out the arm to maintain our T-pose. 
Again, we're just moving the shoulder way up. Don't worry about what it looks like right now. You can come back and adjust after you've seen it. And I clone. Now let's take a look and just see what that looks like. Under the basic walk. Now the shoulders look a lot better there. So let's go ahead and convert. And let's apply that to I clone. And now, as you'll notice, his shoulders are in a lot better shape. And it'll be that way when you save him and reload him. You won't have to keep redoing it. Because you can always select the character, select in to bring up your bones, but you cannot select his collar. You can select this arm, you can put on mirror, and you can raise him up. So you can correct it, but it's not going to stay corrected. You save the character, bring it back in, it'll still have the slumping shoulders. So I would recommend going ahead and correcting it uh, back there in uh, 3D Exchange. And watch for things like this. I left the arm out a little wide. You may want to go back and correct that where it looks like this side. We went a little quick there. But any correction you make in 3D Exchange, you don't have to mess with anymore in iClone. Now let's take a look at an animal. This is going to be a bipedal animal, but at least we can still use it. So let's go ahead and use the Allosaurus. And I'm going to use the Allosaurus IK. Now we're not going to do anything here except export it. We're going to leave our settings just like we would uh, any other character. Now from here, we'll go into 3D Exchange. No use of importing the animation. We know there's not any. We'll go ahead and let it load up. Now the reason we're able to do this is, like I said, this is a bipedal animal. Still going to walk on two legs. So let's go ahead. Remember, you'd want to go ahead and smooth your, your mesh and things. Let's just go ahead and take a look at converting to non-standard. DAS. Go ahead and correct your little problem here. Now, the first thing you're going to run into is the arms are going to be fouled up. And I'll show you what I mean. And that's because they're not in a good T-pose to start with. It assumes that the character starts in a T-pose. So what we've got to do from here is just correct, create actually, a T-pose. I'm going to go ahead and increase this bone size. We're just setting a T-pose, just a basic T-pose. This is just demonstration. You'll want to do a little better than this, take a little more time. That might be good enough to use. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's that's much better. Now let's see what we can do about closing up the mouth and getting the tongue out of the way. Go ahead and raise the tongue up. You may have to use opacity to make that tongue invisible once you're an eye clone. I'm going to say something like that. Okay. We're ready to convert. Except that, of course, we want to go ahead and map everything that needs to be mapped, like the jaw. The tongue is going to be an extra. The tail, that's going to be extra bones. 
and there's nothing that's not being used that we're really going to need. Toes and things like that. You can go ahead and map all those as extra bones if you want to. Okay, let's go ahead and convert it. And let's apply it to iClone. Okay. Big character. Let's see what happens. Okay. That's not too bad. Now, one thing you will have to do, if you want to raise this up into a different position, you'll have to do that after you add your, your walking. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and let's record a little bit of walking. Okay, that's good enough for now. I'm going to hit the N key. And I'm just going to change the position of the character, the way it's walking, its bipedal position. Make the bones wider again so we can see them. Now you could come back here and curl this tail or whatever you want to do with it. If you didn't map them, then you won't be able to do anything with them. The bone has to be mapped. Just because you see it doesn't mean you can grab it. If it wasn't mapped, then it's not going to be available to you. And there you have that. So you're not just limited to people or those type of characters. You can uh, go ahead and convert quite a different range of characters as long as they're bipedal.